Not a place I have to hide in. Life's not worth a damn till you can say I am what I am. Good afternoon and welcome to LGBTQ Life. I'm Mick Fitzgerald, and today I want you to uh, introduce you to my uh, guest. Simon Blankensee, who is a director of Tenny. Simon, you're a director of Tenny. Tell us, how are things progressing? The gender recognition legislation was passed. There was a review last year. What's the update you can give us on that? We're still waiting for, for details. As far as we're aware, the Minister is very happy with the review that took place. The chair of Tenny, Sarah Phillips, um, along with Meninia from Belong To, led that review process. And, and we were very pleased that... Uh, all the departments engaged really well and and listened to what the trans community had to say. Um, we are hopeful that in the very near future there'll be more progress on that, but but we have to wait and see. Th things things move slowly, mm -hmm. but uh, we're hopeful that the minister will put forward some legislation soon. Mm -hmm. And you know, a, a really wonderful review. Like we were very very happy with everything that was said mm -hmm. in the review, mm -hmm. um, and we'd be very confident that um, the minister is 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 happy to push through all the things that were said. Mm -hmm. If I'm correct on this one, and certainly feel free to uh, correct me on it if I haven't got it right, the issues that particularly groups like Tenney had about the original gender rec recognition legislation, which many people were very, very uh, welcoming of, was that there was a deficiency in terms of age, uh, there was a deficiency in terms of recognition of non-binary and intersex. I gather they were uh, uh, addressed during the review. Absolutely, Mick, yes. Um, so th there was really um, a difficulty getting our message across at the, the time of the uh, original legislation back in 2015. Um, th there was a lot of uh, new information for a lot of new TDs who were new to the issues um, and also a lot of senators who were new to the issues. Mm -hmm. We had huge support from them, but we weren't able to make the progress in terms of non-binary understanding amongst the TDs mm. and I think the time in between since 2015 a, a lot of the members of, of Tenny and a lot of the non-binary members of the community have taken that opportunity to engage with the politicians to engage with the uh, the civil service and to try and educate them as to what it means not to fit into the binary I mean my understanding from, from, from being involved in the community is at least one third of the new young members coming forward into Tenny who are, or are showing themselves in schools and in colleges are, are um, not fitting into that binary. They are seeing themselves as having a non-binary identity. It is the growth area. There will be more, in my opinion, non-binary people um, in in the, in the tenny movement in the transgender movement mm -hmm. into the future and um, they will not be trans men and trans women men and women with trans histories mm -hmm. there will be a huge number of non-binary people yeah. the other side of the coin there simon uh, if you've got any updates on this it would be very very welcome you can bring in the greatest legislation in the world and i think irish air legislation is incredibly good compared to uh, what's around the world we were you know once the campaign uh, was acknowledged the irish government uh, did at least the, uh, the the government at the time they really did uh, uh, bring in some good legislation however you can bring in the best legislation in the world but if there is not the infrastructure there to support that and I'm particularly thinking of the medical infrastructure um, it's just purely paper legislation in many instances what's the situation uh, here in terms of access to medical services and access to uh, uh, necessary treatments well I, mean, I just want to go back if you don't mind before no I problem. talk about that I just want to talk about children and young people I mean mm. what we had argued uh, back in 2015 we spent a lot of time hammering away and we had a lot of very strong advocates Ginny and Van Turnhout yeah. um, amongst many others mm. who strongly advocated that children should be included Indeed. Um, 
what we ended up with was under 18s mm -hmm. finding it very difficult to access any kind of legal recognition, mm -hmm. which caused huge problems in the likes of schools and clubs and living their lives. And what we're hopeful is that we are now talking about a situation where children will have access with the support of their, of their parents mm -hmm. to be able to be who they are from the earliest possible age. And obviously for under 12, under 13s, we're talking simply about social transition, being able to wear the clothes, mm -hmm. the hairstyle, use the name of your choice, allowing them to live a full and normal healthy life from an early age so they don't build up all the difficulties that we've seen our older community members who've been held and not allowed to live their lives for so long. The, the suffering that they've had takes such a long time to recover from. So we're hoping that that legislation will go through so the children will be able, with the support of their parents, to actually change their details. And this is just legal. Yeah. Something that, uh, if you like, critics of the legislation have come to me and said, and I just want you to, uh, as I say, address that and if, if necessary, even clarify it. They've always said, I don't support blah, 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 because it allows children or at least teenagers to override the wishes of their parents. What would you respond to that? Uh, well, I, I think I, I would I would be caught on two ways. I think it's very important that um, children and parents communicate with each other. I think we're finding that more and more parents are hugely supportive of their young people and they want to understand. You know, we, we have more calls from parents and family members to Tenny than under any other um, uh, issue. You know, those are the people that are looking to know more. There's a huge growth in transparency, that our, our family support area. Um, where, where parents and family members can come and find out more and be able to support their children. Our experience is the vast majority of parents actually want to go on this journey with their children. They want to see their children happy. Yep. Well, uh, Simon, from my experience with Tenny, which is going back before the pre uh, the uh, the legislation, if there is one thing that I learned, and it's uh, it transcends uh, almost all of the uh, issues that the negativity is, is that if you acknowledge that somebody is transgender, the sooner you can address the issue socially, medically and every other way, the better. Absolutely. I mean, it, this was the issue for me. It, it's no secret that I'm a parent of a, a trans young person. Mm -hmm. and my, when my child came to, to, to me and at the time, I think the hardest thing for me to cope with was that they had made a preparation to go and stay elsewhere for fear that they would be rejected by their family mm -hmm. and that we would turn them out. Um, they, they sent us a letter um, rather than actually face us because yeah. um, they found it difficult to put into words. They were afraid of how it was going to be received. And I mean, I am hugely heartened now that I meet parents whose children have come out to them as, as trans or non-binary and they are immediately aware they have a lot more information they've already experienced this debate this discussion they have a sense of what this might be about mm -hmm. um i think seven eight years ago when when i was in that situation i really had no idea yeah. and and i was starting from a standing still position yeah just uh finally on this one uh, simon because of my background and because of the uh, the program i do here Confidentially, I get people coming to me and saying, uh, oh, I think my brother or my sister might be trans, or uh, the latest one I got was uh, somebody said my brother's boyfriend, and they explained what was the situation was. I always say the same thing to them. That is, the first thing you need to do is to go get good professional advice. And I always say, and the place to get that is Tenny. Um, What's your situation? What's your uh, take on that one, Simon? I mean, it, clearly, I see Tenny as preeminent. Now, people might might say I'm uh, I'm biased in that regard, but I don't uh, I don't have any other issue in that in that regard. I still see Tenny is the best place to go. Absolutely. Well, I have to, have to say, hundred percent, you're giving the right advice. Mm -hmm. I mean, the first port of call is Tenny. If if somebody needs further advice, Tenny are the best people to sign post you. Um, we are a very professional organisation. We're always over overworked. We've always got too much to do mm -hmm. because of the growth in our community. But we we will work whatever hours it takes to meet all those needs, to answer all those calls and emails. If it takes a little bit of time to get back to you, please bear with us. We will get back to you. 
Um, we have a number of support groups around the country. Um, we, as I said, we have a family support network. We have uh, people that will go into schools mm -hmm. who will help uh, if young people are having difficulty accessing um, the, 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 the supports they need in a particular school. We're doing a huge amount of work um, and we're working with the other LGBT groups to try and enhance our services and help them to, to meet the needs of the trans community as well. Yeah. But generally speaking, what we like to do is that do that through Tenny, that we help to guide them. Yeah. Just uh, something else for uh, that might be very useful for people who uh, have uh, questions, is the only way I will put it. You don't necessarily want to ring up an office or you just want to meet people. This year, uh, as ever, Tenny will be very prominent in the Pride March. Uh, you usually have a breakfast as well, Simon. Yes. Uh, where will that be held this year? Um, we're very fortunate. Um, we, we, um, last year we were... Um, we were able to go to the uh, Royal College of Surgeons mm -hmm. in Ireland. Um, it was a great breakfast. We did some training with them yeah. um, over the last two years, and um, they very graciously hosted us last year. And I believe that's going to happen again this year. Mm -hmm. um, it was perfect for us because we were starting in Stevens Green, mm -hmm. um, and we were able to go into that beautiful, beautiful building it's there. Very the wonderful out, wasn't hall. It? <laughs> I mean, we we felt like royalty, and mm -hmm. they treated us like royalty. And I just want to thank all. All the volunteers from the Royal College of Surgeons in mm. Ireland who made us feel so welcome last year and I really look forward to seeing them all again this year. Yeah. Will you need any volunteers for the march? We always need volunteers uh, to help with stewarding. Um, we have huge numbers come and march with us. Um, the, the, the route is, is a little bit challenging yeah. for us because we're going to be meeting up in Stevens Green. We're now going to have to go to Parnell, Parnell Square, Square to start. Again, yeah. But I have to say, I have to say, I think the decision that the march will go through Dublin, that will go through the centre of town, down O'Connell Street, the traditional route, and finish in Merrion Square has been a huge joy for all the members of the community. I think Tenny are absolutely thrilled that that decision has been made. We've been quite disappointed with mm -hmm. circling the outside of the city. It doesn't feel like we're fully accepted. Like Pride is, yes, it's a protest, but it is a declaration that we are here, particularly for the trans and non-binary community. We are here, we want to be seen. We want to be in the centre of the city. Yeah, we're a bit old school in that, <clears throat> that regard, isn't it? That was the traditional route. They, they said it was changed because of the Lewis and all of that, but I am delighted to say it is back giving full recognition uh, second only biggest parade uh, after Paddy's Day as well absolutely and I mean I think when, when the Pope marched through uh, the centre of the city there was no way that was going to happen and that the pride was going to go around the outskirts in my opinion I yeah. don't think that was ever going to happen yeah well, well I'm also informed by uh, my good mate Eddie McGuinness who is uh, the PR uh, chap for our pride that it's going to be held in the park this time around and okay it will be uh, places outside but that will be a huge uh, uh, as I say boost rather yeah. They're just on the concrete. And I'd just like to say that, that Eddie and everybody at Dublin Pride have been hugely helpful to to um, my colleague Sarah and myself at Transfusion in terms of getting ourselves organised for the festival that's coming up um, starting on Friday. Um, they have been really helpful in us, uh, trying to help us to get venues and, and supports. So I think, you know, Dublin LGBT Pride has really become a, a, a huge support to us. So yeah. thank you very much to them. Uh, uh, well, I, I can only reiterate that because I bumped into Eddie at a uh, uh, at an event a couple of weeks ago, and he I was saying, "Oh, transfusions back again. This is great." And he said, "Oh yes, uh, we." Uh, you know we had an input to getting the venue so uh, and I, at that stage i didn't know where it was but i'm very impressed of uh, what's come up this time around yeah just let's say uh, we, now we want to get on to the important stuff simon which is transfusion now uh, i first went to transfusion i think it was about seven years ago it, ha it had had a couple of iterations before that and i think that was in uh, up off uh, francis street or up off uh, thomas street and i just loved it and since then i brought family members to it when it was on in the chocolate uh, factory it's a fabulous event um it hasn't been going for a couple of years now but we it, it's back again and i said it's really being welcomed just uh, quickly, if you could tell people, what is transfusion and why is it important to the trans community? Well, the transfusion is hugely important. It's an opportunity for us to celebrate our 
I suppose our artistic ability, our culture, mm -hmm. um, to have fun, to to explore the themes of mental health, to come together and, and literally have a festival. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it grew out of, as you were saying, um, an event that happened uh, back up in Steambox yeah. um, and at the K K Bear Koss who, who ran Steambox very kindly allowed us to use mm. uh, Steambox in 2013 mm. and it was my first experience mm -hmm. um, of, of any um, yeah, event in the trans community yeah. and I remember meeting you up there and I actually was looking at footage the other day about that yeah. Brings and back memories, doesn't it? Brings back some lovely <laughs> memories. Some lovely memories. Mm -hmm. um, well, uh, unfortunately, last Saturday I was um, I was down with Kay, and uh, she was uh, saying goodbye to Steambox. Steambox is actually closing down. It's going to be very um, sad. It, it's going to be uh, knocked down or or turned into something else. Mm -hmm. um, so they were actually selling off stuff, and and thankfully for for us, we've now got a couple of plinths, we bought a few plinths off K. Mm -hmm. We're now going to have those as part of our um, store of materials for transfusion going forward. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it is sad to see it go, it really is, it was, mm -hmm. it was a wonderful venue. But um, we've struggled in, in the last two years, um, we, we've come up with plans to have a transfusion event but we haven't been able to find a venue and the timing mm -hmm. to actually be able to proceed with it and it's been a huge struggle for us. Yeah. We, we feel that we let down the community by not, not having it bit, the last two bit, years. No, 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 well, no, yeah. but that's how we feel and yeah, I think it's, it's right that it should happen every year mm -hmm. and if there's somebody out there listening to this who feels that they can find us uh, and you know other venues, I mean mm -hmm. CHQ, hopefully we might get CHQ again mm -hmm. but if, if we can find other smaller venues that will add to the different events that we can hold because some of them are for 30 or 40 people some are for 100 some 200 mm, yeah. it's difficult to find the venues that will match the different um mm. events that we need to hold some of them need to be kind of small community events for people to actually share in a, in a smaller group and some need to be open to the public so um it, it is a huge difficulty for us finding the the places to hold those events and, and I want to thank all the people that have stepped up this time. We have um, A4 Sounds, we have the Irish Film Institute, we have CHQ, we have the Epic um, uh, uh, Museum, um, we have uh, Tenny HQ, um, our, our head office on mm -hmm. Ellis Key. Um, I'm trying to think if I've forgotten anybody, but it'll come yeah, up. It'll come up later. anyway as we discuss the individual. Now, so, this is just a, a purely a personal thought, Simon. Um, mm -hmm. Whenever I cover LGBT, which of course we do on this program every week, um, people are always saying um, it's always a bit Dublin city centric. Uh, that uh, we've got a big uh, Dublin, uh, South Dublin are probably going to be the most LGBT friendly council. This program uh, is uh, taken in uh, Blanchard's town as well. Would Tenny consider, and all I'm asking is consider, taking some of these events perhaps out to uh, some of the more outlying areas because not everybody lives in Camp Temple Bar. Absolutely and and every time we, we get together to discuss what we're going to do we, we talk about that and we talk about how we're going to do it and it's all about capacity, it's all about getting numbers together. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I have my own vision that that maybe the different support groups would would amass together and go to like two or three of them would go to one venue outside of Dublin and have a little festival. It it's happened before in Waterford, um about four years ago as part of the diversity festival. Mm -hmm. Um we went down and we had a whole series of of events down there as part of the Waterford Diversity Festival. And if that can be organised, we will definitely support it. Mm -hmm. If if somebody has an idea in a venue, you know, talk to Transfusion, uh, email us if anybody mm -hmm. has any questions or wants to get involved in any of the, the, the um, events. The, the way to get in touch with us is transfusion, mm -hmm. that's all one word, 2016 at gmail.com. Uh, we haven't updated it since 2016. It's the <laughs> first time we had our own email yeah. and we've just left it with 2016. Yeah. Well, uh, perhaps now that there's a new council in at Dublin City Council, they've got a fabulous staff uh, LGBT support network. We might have a word with our friends there and see if they can come in and help, perhaps with venues for next year. Absolutely, but, that would be brilliant. Wouldn't it? But now, they, uh, I've said uh, we're, we've got Transfusion coming back in 2019 and an extremely welcome development as far as I'm concerned. It starts next uh, Friday the 31st, yes. uh, Simon. Um, just tell us about 
what it's starting with and, uh, and how people can um, perhaps start going to some of the events. Absolutely. So over the Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, we'll be putting up a, a wonderful gallery. We already have huge numbers of submissions for the gallery. There is there's um, interactive video pieces, etc. So the gallery is going to be officially opened on Friday starting at half past seven. We're hoping to have a dignitary, but I can't actually confirm oh, that. We'd have to keep that under wraps. We'll have surprises. to wait during the week for that. Mm -hmm. um, I know who it's supposed to be, but they yeah. haven't 100% confirmed. Oh. So um, we're, we're hoping that they will be there. 7.30, we're going to have um, some okay. speakers talk a little bit about, they're going to tell some stories, mm -hmm. particularly connected with mental health issues and their journey as, as, as members of the trans community. Um, and it's going to be a very entertaining night and people will get to wander around the, the gallery. And um, now there is a limit of 100 people in the gallery mm -hmm. and the gallery is in the CHQ building. It's on the Liffey side of mm -hmm. CHQ in the Irish Financial Services Centre. Uh, if you get off at George's Dock, Lewis stop mm -hmm. and walk, through, walk around. Yeah. I think our entrance is going to be around the side. But there will be there will be a way there will be signs up to help you find it. Yeah. Um, but the first hundred people will get into the gallery. Um, and that's so a strict please limit. come early. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's a strict limit. You've got there's a uh, something here called the soapbox sessions. What's that? People the telling stories. Soapbox sessions is basically storytelling. Yeah. Te storytelling people. You know that there will be a number of either amusing stories or stories refer to to mm. people's um, un unusual experiences. And um, I think they will be very entertaining. They always are. Yep. And an opportunity for people to meet and look at the art and reflect on on the diversity of the community, because that is what is on the walls. Yep. You've also the following morning for those who are still, uh, you know, still in bright eyed and bushy tail. You've got our very good friend, uh, Karul. You're having a non-binary workshop uh, down there at the Tenny HQ in uh, Ellis Quay. Um, Absolutely. Um, anybody who identifies as, as non-binary is very welcome to join us for the non-binary workshop. Mm -hmm. um, again, if, if you want to come along to that, the best way to, to ensure that you're expected mm -hmm. is to email transfusion2016 at gmail.com and just confirm that you're coming along so we have an idea of numbers. Um, obviously, we don't want to run out of coffee. Absolutely, um, and uh, then one of our one of my favourite groups, Transparency, uh, which uh, which I think is where I originally met yourself. Uh, Absolutely, they're holding an event on Monday. Yes, we've we've invited Elaine. Elaine uh, lives down in Kerry, and she's one of um, she's one of um, the facilitators with the group down there, and she has uh, a lot of uh, tricks up her sleeve in terms of. Um, arts and crafts so mm -hmm. she is going to be doing a lovely craft activity with particularly for young people but obviously older people are more than welcome to come along as well it is for families but Tenny do not see families as being young children necessarily and um, we'll be delighted to see lots of young children it lifts our, our spirits it lifts our hearts to see young trans people being themselves able to express themselves at a young age but also if if you're part of a family and there is a trans member please come along share in the fun meet other people be part of the gallery get to look around and experience the gallery yeah well i can uh, honestly say without fear of contradiction transparency is one of the really eminent groups and uh, anybody who is a parent and concerned yeah. get down there and at least just make contact and i'd just like to to on a personal note i'd just like to thank catherine cross and mm -hmm. and vanessa lacy who have done a trojan job over the last six seven years since mm -hmm. i first met them you know building transparency to to the the organization it is now and helping hundreds of families it has been absolutely brilliant yeah. and so many young people have benefited yeah i'm going to shoot along quickly simon uh, you've got trans history talks you've got the individual uh, individuality trans visible campaign and then you go uh, the resilience workshop with my uh, really good friend vanessa lacy what a uh, what a force in the uh, organization tell us just about that workshop simon so that that workshop is 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 um it's very limited and as i say we need to, to contact the email. It's, it's an opportunity for a small group of 15 people to really get a little bit of intense um, opportunity just to explore their, their inner strength, how they, they can kind of, um, I suppose, make them sort of more able to cope with the day-to-day -day stresses of life. Mm -hmm. um, it, it isn't easy. It is getting easier to be trans, 
but it is never going to be easy until a lot of things change. Indeed. And so people do have their struggles and I suppose Vanessa is the ideal person to give you tips and tricks as to how you manage and how you find a way through. Yep. Now you've also got uh, a, a movie night um, and uh, our good friend Claire Farrell is having a fabulous coffee morning. But what I want to do is just before, uh, there's also a comedy night as well. I want to uh, come on to what I consider the main event because it is absolutely fabulous. Uh, got to get you out of my head. That's coming up on Saturday the 8th. Tell us all about that, uh, Simon. So got to get it out of your head is, um, or my head, I, I, I keep saying your and Sarah my says head, my. Yeah. I have no idea which it is now. Yeah. At this stage, I'm confused. Um, but basically, the, the idea is that um, people have their struggles, like I was saying with the, with the resilience um, training there. People have their struggles. They, they use whatever technique they have to cope with their mental health. You know, there's a lot of struggles within the community. A lot of a lot of members of the community will find it very difficult because society is telling them that somehow they do not fit in or they are not right. Um, society is wrong. They are absolutely brilliant, but it can be very difficult for them. And many of the community use their their talents and their undoubted talents. Their whether it be comedy, whether it be singing, whether it be dancing, um, whether it be their art. So they perform whatever way they choose we have a lot of singers we have as i say dancers we have um comedians going to be on that night as well we're going to have um there used to be fashion shows as well yeah. there okay. is the fine that the finale is the breaking the binary fashion show and, and if you haven't been to the breaking the binary fashion show it is a treat and we're still looking for more people to join us um, in, in walking the catwalk, you don't have to have any experience, um, you can bring along your own outfit and you can be yourself. Yep. And so basically you will be roared up the catwalk mm. as um, the, the finale sets off, everybody um, has a most amazing time. Yeah. They, they can actually strut their stuff and be themselves. Yeah. Just uh, in conclusion, the uh, transfusion starts 31st of May this um, coming Friday. It runs until the <coughs> following uh, Saturday week, uh, the 8th of um, uh, the 8th of June. Last but by no means least, Simon, can they get? The, you've got a fabulous program. Can people get that or just go to the website? Um, the, the, the best thing to do is um, is to find us on Facebook, Transfusion um, on, on Facebook. We have um, a Twitter, um, art, at Arts Trans, um, and, or, or you can go onto the Tenny website and all the updates are on the Tenny website. Yeah. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm going to have to cut you off there because you. that's the end of uh, today's programme. I want to thank Carrie for doing such a fabulous job on the desk. Transfusion, I can't rec um, recommend it too much. So Simon Blankensee, it's been fabulous having you as a guest today. Thank you. Thank you. My world that I want to have a little pride in My world and it's not a place I have to hide in Life's not worth a damn till you can say I am